Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to do an unboxing of 1944 Battle of the Bulge. It's by Worthington Games. It's designed by Dan Forney. Hopefully I'm saying that right, but uh, I'm saying it phonetically. So anyway, uh, this is obviously a bulge game, World War II. Um, it is a two-player game. Um, it is listed as being... Um, the solitaire suitability is listed as low or near low, but it is listed as one to two players. So normally what that means is it's a standard uh, war game where you're playing both sides. Um, it's a low counter density game, which is cool and apparently limited rules. So you'll be up and playing really quick. So we're gonna just crack it open and take a look at what you get inside. It's one thing that the uh, wargaming uh, community is missing is bulge games. There's just not, there's not any. I mean, you can hardly ever find it. It's like no one ever wants to touch it. No one ever wants to cover that. And if you know me, you know that's a joke. So this one got a little dinged in shipping, but no big deal. So this is the, uh, your victory uh, log. It's like your archive record. Basically, it's a score pad where you can just, you know, uh, note, you know, who played, how you played, if you played solitaire, and, uh, who, you know, your record if you're not using any kind of other tracking app. Quite a few of those. There are double-sided. So there you go. Now we've got some plan cards here. Oh, these are German variable objective cards. So that's one thing that might... Uh, make it slightly different. Those are very big cards, very thick, glossy. Um, so the German has a secret objective. So like if you're playing a short, well, if you're playing the uh, main game, 10 turns, you have this objective and that's the standard one, but then there's these variable ones so they can play with whatever they want. Spoiling attack, Hitler's autumn mist, Rundstedt's plan Martin. So those are some options there. All right, so we have a rule book that they say is not very dense, and it appears not to be. And there's two copies, which is interesting, one for each player. And it is 12 pages of rules with examples. So full color, glossy, uh, you know, standard, excellent Worthington quality. Shows you what the units are, markers, rules. And victory actually shows up on page seven. And then we have a terrain chart, optional rules. So really about seven, seven or eight pages of rules if you're counting the terrain chart, as obviously they are some rules. All right, so there's two copies of that, identical. And everything is really tightly packed in here. And then we have the German order of battle for the game and the allied order of battle. And these are the German, German starting locations, shown on the chart here, and the Allied starting locations. All right, now we've got the cardboard. Let me dig these out well. Grabbing the board too, it seems. Yep, there's the board, so we'll get down to that in a minute. So we have three sheets of counters. And they look very good. They're large. Punch nice and clean. Got that nice pre-rounded. Um, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. You don't have to clip them. So we've obviously got uh, some allied counters here. And then we've got attacked markers that flip with finish. Finished. So those are doubles. I mean, not doubles, double purpose. And then we've got obviously the gray German markers. And then here we have moved, and that just popped right out and also finished. So there we go. So I guess attacked means not that the unit was attacked, but that the unit has attacked, would be my guess. All right, and then we've got a weather modifier. We've got overcast and or mist. So we got that. 
got some alternate counters here. I'm sure those are for the optional rules. These four right here have a little box around them that says they're alternate counters. We've got some hidden counters, hidden markers. Control markers, which obviously are, well, these are German control. I did not see, I did not see any U.S. control markers. Maybe as everything's U.S. control, unless the Germans control it. Uh, here's some more alternate counters as well for the Germans. And then we've got in supply and probably out of supply. So you are going to have to track supply. Hopefully it's, it's not a difficult process. I lost the counter onto the floor, so I'll have to find that. And then, what else we got here? We've got the game board, and there's a mounted board, which is really nice. And we'll take a look at that in a second. I love mounted boards, as a general rule. All right, and we also have a custom tray, which is a nice touch. They did this with the Band of Brothers series. They added the custom tray. Um, and I guess they've continued that process. We have custom die and a regular six-sided die that's already preloaded in here. So obviously the counters, markers, etc., will fit nicely, you know, in the tray, standing up. You can organize them. So we have a nice tray. I'll just leave that counter in there. We have dice, custom dice. And like I said, one standard, I assume it's a standard six-sided die. Let's Let's take a look at that first. Yeah, just a normal die. And it does work. Sorry about the shadows here. And then we've got our custom die here. Obviously we'll find out when we read the rules. So there's 10 of these. And they work, and I give a blank on both of those. Put that into the light a little bit. So let's uh, unfold the board and take a look at that. All right, so here's a quick uh, look at the board for 1944 Battle on the Bulge. You got your out of supply chart, resource points chart. You have your uh, terrain effects already on the board. You got the Allied turn track, followed by the German turn track. Um, and you'll confirm that with the others, but so then you got a RP track. Each side has that, and then here's the artwork. Very nice. Not too realistic to get in the way, not too uh, cheesy. You know, some uh, some maps that try not to be realistic end up looking a little uh, silly too. So these actually uh, look very nice. It's Roquefort. They make great salad dressing. So that is a look at the board. It's uh, four panels by two. So that would put it at about 34 uh, by 22 standard, standard uh, tripod, standard uh, war game uh, mounted board. It seemed to lay flat pretty easily, which was nice. I haven't put any weight on it yet at all and it seems to be doing quite well. So, Okay, so if you're getting the 1944 Battle of the Bulge from Worthington Games, you're going to get a, a custom tray, 10 custom dice, a regular die, um, a lid to go on it, of course. And then you're going to get three sheets of counters. Yours will be complete. One of mine counters is on the floor. And then you're going to get two-player uh, order of battle cards as well as the uh, setup setup maps. Two copies of the rule book, the German objective cards, and an archive log for your game plays. And the lovely mounted board we looked at. And that's what is going to be in the box for 1944 Battle of the Bulge by Dan Forney, published by Worthington Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.